Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. This is another weekly channeling video. Today's guest you've met before, and if you like the interview that we do today and the discussion that we have, go ahead and check out the playlists because he is featured on there. Today we have David Bowie. So welcome in, David. Hi, it's nice to see you. Your energy is always so strong and very insightful when you come through and share information with us. So we appreciate it very much. Remember, as a viewer, part of the goal of Above, of Above Life Channel is to give you the opportunity to feel his energy. So I'm inviting you to really feel the energy of David Bowie. I kind of want to say Sir David Bowie, but I know that um, I don't think you're knighted or anything. He says, no, 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 no. He says, that makes me sound old too when you say sir. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I want to talk about that also. So um, one of your comments that you had left, the viewers had left on one of our other um, videos was about when people cross over when they die and the topic I was talking about, how why is it that people die at the end of the year, at the beginning of the year, around holidays? And one of our viewers asked about birthdays. Why is it that people die around their birthdays? And David, I thought it would be great to talk to you about this question because you, my understanding is that you died in right near your birthday. In fact, I looked it up so I knew the exact dates. Um, birthday was January 8th and death date, transition date was January 10th. So at the time I'm recording this video, it is in January, it is 2019. So it's been a couple of years, like three years, I think, since you um, transitioned over. Yes, because you died the same year that Prince did. He says, yes, I can't forget. Nobody ever lets me forget that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's like kind of giving, you know, teasing a little bit. Can you, um, can you respond to this question? Why is it that you transitioned or left? after your birthday why did you did you wait did you have a choice how did that work for you personally can you talk about that give us some insight please he says i i think it's uh personal for everyone it's something that you need to come to terms with for yourself to make sure your plan is complete that you feel ready to let this lifetime go and that's a really difficult thing for the person to do even though the spirit knows that everything is going to be just fine for you and that your family although they will grieve and your loved your loved ones those who love you he says those who love you will grieve that it's really best for everyone not to prolong it and he's saying um he says I suffered from an illness and most of which was undiscovered for quite some time and it was deteriorating my body inside inside and out and it began to affect my many uh, parts of my life and it was important you know um, my wife and I we had discussions about this and after we found out that uh, my illness was, uh, he doesn't use the word terminal, but he refers to um, not, not, uh, he, not curable. We had discussions about how things would go, how things would be. If I were to become unable to speak for myself think for myself and to lose my dignity and you know some of those things that you don't want to talk about but that happens as you either as you age usually typically it's as you age or as you deal with a illness that will eventually take your life it became apparent that 
life was going to be shorter than we had wanted it to be and that my time would not be long enough to really for anyone to satisfy anyone and I mean is it ever really I don't know that it ever really is enough time when you realize you don't have it all of a sudden it becomes very important more precious than anything else that you could have wanted and your question about leaving after my birthday I thought it sounded pretty good to uh, leave at you know 69 it sounds it sounds quite a bit older than 68 doesn't it so you died at you were 69 when you died is that right you guys I knew it was up there. Is it 67 to 68 or 68 to 69? I think it's 68 to 69. Um, not quite to 70 yet, but he said that sounds quite a bit old. It sounds quite a bit older, doesn't it? 69 sounds, sounds pretty old, <laughs> is what he says. Actually, it was part of a gift for my daughter. There was sort of this wish that came to be that... Uh, my family wanted me to see my birthday, wanted me to grow older. And so it was, it's sort of a gift to let the time pass and then to, to gracefully bow out. You know, he's like, he's like showing me to take the last, take the stage for the last time. And then, you know, he bows, he takes a bow. And then he steps off stage. No encores. He says no encores. He says it feels like it was for his family, for his wife or his daughter. His daughter really feels important. So I don't know if there's something around her, about her. But it feels like um, he's acknowledging his, his wife and daughter specifically. I know he has a son. I think I know he has a son. And, but he's specifically acknowledging them. He really loved his wife despite what you, any rumors or anything like that that you might know. Um, but they were a good partnership, he said. We were a good partnership. And so can you talk about, is there a significance though energetically, like for spirits, like you yourself from your experience, but also others that they would leave around like a holiday, like a birthday? Is there something significant about that or something that is you know, important about that. He says, it's an energy opening. It's like um, when you come into life, when you come into being and you make that choice, you are reborn into your life. And there's sort of a sweet kind of a poeticness about honoring the cycle, the cycle of life and acknowledging life by leaving after a birthday or for some just before and there is a sense of humor about it as well perhaps if you leave before because not that you couldn't make it to your birthday but you chose to not be any older you know because they post that you know they put that in the obituaries and they publicize that that's like down in history and they carve it in stone like literally he shows me literally the, the gravestones they carve it in stone so for some it's important not to get older and for others it's like an accomplishment to go right after their birth date so he says it's really poetic and it's like a, an honoring of the life cycle energetically I think it's beautiful and I am going to say your birthday David is exactly one month before mine I mean we're, we're we were quite a bit different in age but the eighth the infinity sign that's a really good day to incarnate don't you think yes I quite agree he says yes I quite agree <laughs> all right thank you so much that was just fascinating so interesting so um, I'd also like to speak with you or chat with you a little bit um, about um, I spoke with, you and I have talked, we've had some other conversations that people at Above Life Channel will see in the future that will be added to the playlists eventually, where we have some conversations about some other afterlife topics, which are really great because you're so insightful and I appreciate that. But recently I just um, did a channel with Freddie Mercury and he, yeah, we mentioned you. I don't know if I brought you up. I think I might've brought you up. Um, 
but he spoke about you a little bit. And so I'm curious about that. You know, he has this big movie that came out and I was channeling him to ask him about what he felt, how he felt about the movie and um, what his thoughts were on that because it's like really successful. And it's brought a lot of people into the energy of music again and way awakened the spiritual connection and spirituality and music and how it's so intertwined. So how do you feel about that, David? The energy of, well, so much. We could talk about spirituality and music. That would be a great conversation if you'd like to talk about that. Or do you have a, do you have a viewpoint on Freddie Mercury and his big movie? Like, how come you don't have a movie? What's up with that? <laughs> he says, Oh, it hasn't been long enough. He said, look at how long it, ta it took for him to get a movie. Decades, he says, decades. So, and, uh, but he says, this is so funny, he says that um, the actor that played Freddie could easily play, um, could easily play David, uh, Rami, I believe his name is Rami, or Rami. And uh, he's right, he probably could. You'd have to dye his hair though. I think he has really dark hair. You'd have to make it really blonde. Um, he says, that wouldn't be a problem. There's lots of wigs and he could make it pink. And you know, there's lots of, it depends on which part of my life, he's saying, it depends on which part of my life, which decade, which, which um, incarnation of my life the movie would be on, he's, he's saying. You'd have to have many movies, perhaps. <laughs> Maybe a documentary would be better. Um, how would you feel about that? Oh, I think it's quite, quite all right. If it helps others to understand their own lives to, especially with musicians, like he feels this energy of musicians and mentoring musicians, especially for musicians to give them insight and uh, license to be able to really explore themselves and really push themselves creatively and, and um, really edgy. I think that's a, a very good thing, a good thing to do. I think people try to fit a mold too much now and people are afraid of um, losing their fame or losing their footing or um, being um, set in an image, in one image. And there are many of us, he's pointing to himself, there are many of us, he says that um, you would consider reinventing, but it's really um, recreating. You know, it's really just reimagining ourselves and bringing different parts of our personality, our personas channeling different energies of ourselves within ourselves that come forward. So it's not because we wanted to change our image for me in particular, personally, not because I wanted to change my image, but because I wanted to do different things. I wanted to experience, explore, and discover different parts of myself and share that in my music and in my performances in the theatrical presentation of of things and it's the energy of the whole you know you mentioned spirituality of music and music and spirituality are closely connected uh, music is often a, a key and core channel for many to be able to connect with their feelings and their emotions and to allow new thoughts and ideas to come into their minds and to bring into fruition more connection with themselves and with other people because music can form a common bond. Fan bases and communities at concerts and um, you know and the, we used to have fan clubs where people would write in um, and now most of that is done on, on social platforms and social media and on the websites and there still is an opportunity to build relationships with people that you have a common interest with based upon the music and the music is more than just the words and the lyrics, although that's the storytelling in and of itself can be such an incredible um, growth experience and you can really go, go really deep with that and learn and dig into the, the metaphors and the meanings and apply it to your own lives while at the same time trying to understand the, the core message that the, the artist was bringing forward. It's just like reading a good book. It's like listening to music. The lyrics really give a lot. However, the true power, the truest form of the highest power energetically that comes through in the music is the flow state of the rhythm and the harmonization, the frequencies, and the way, the manner in which that those things stream together and come together that create that experience, that streaming and the coming together is your spirit, your soul, your energy. And the words, the lyrics is bringing the mind into the process. So all parts of you, your mind and your heart and your spirit 
and your energy and your physical body because you're moving, you are affected by the music. Whether you like it or don't like it, you can tell that in your body, you can feel it. Your body knows, your body has that wisdom and knows. So all parts of you are right there, engaged and participating when it's music. So spirituality and music is very much um, the same. It is one and the same thing, very, very much so whether people who study music recognize it as a process of channeling or divine connection or of creative connection, it's creating, it's artistry, it's, it's imagery, it's interpretation and allowing your imagination to participate and take part. And, it, and, and it's the truest expression of yourself and who you are. And when music touches someone, it gives them that, those same permissions for inside of themselves to explore some of those things to ask some of those questions of themselves to recognize new parts of themselves and it really is an an evolutionary experience music so spirituality and music are very much one and the same energetically speaking that was beautiful <laughs> that was incredible my goodness wow that, that was incredible. Is that why we like different kinds of music? Because for me, for example, I have a ton of different, like if you, you guys at, a, at Above Life Channel, if you saw my playlist, like when I'm exercising or when I'm, I have a dance break and I just kind of wiggle and move to get energy cleared so that I'm in between sessions or in between channeling, I just jam out, you know, pull my earbuds in and I just uh, go to town. Some of the things I have, I could have a country song, I could have a rap song, I could have R&B music, I could have instrumental music, I could have um, new age music, uh, I could have um, you know the 90s music from the 90s or the 80s, I could have music from the 50s, I could have music, you know, I, just so many genres and different artists. Um, is our interest in music, is that reflective of our personality as a human? Or is that more reflective of our spirit, like facets of our spirit, our soul? Can you talk about that a little bit? Like our, what we're drawn to for music? Like what does that say about us? You know, from, a, from your spiritual viewpoint, vantage point. He's saying um, the variety of things is, it, 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 it shares, it shares part, when you share, uh, how, do you, how is he describing this? Can you, can, you, can you say this in words, David, if you can? Because I, I'm getting the information, but I can't hear it. I'm getting it, like it's coming in a download. He says, just speak through your heart with it. So when you like specific types of music or specific lyrics or rhythms, uh, beats of music, energy, it is connecting with a part of your spirit, a part of your spirit that wants to be expressed. And whether it be uh, you're trying to clear it, you're trying, you have a, some kind of block or resistance, and so you're listening to a song that makes you cry and it's like a breakup song or something, or it's a sad song that tells a story that you just, oh, your heart just aches for the song. It gives you a healthy way to express, to clear the energy of that emotion. Whatever it's attached to in your life, it can clear, but it comes through the energy of the music, of the rhythm and the song both. It's a, it's a collaboration to help clear. But songs and music can also invoke um, a timeline for you, for your life. It can mark different milestones and experiences in your life, good or bad, however you, you discern those. But it can give you a timeline of your life and that is a beautiful, um, although it's in chronological order, which works for the mind and, and the spirit doesn't really understand that, the spirit as a whole in a circle, it's like a record and there are many tracks on that album. And that's a, definitely a reflection and a metaphor if you, if you choose, choose it to be such for your life. And it's different parts of you, of, the, of all of you, of all the aspects of you. So it, it tells a lot about a person, not the kind of music they like, but the, the different um, types of music as far as the rhythms and the beats and the, and the different instruments that are used and the, the technology that could be used or the cutting edge arrangements or, or different, um, different things that are brought in to the music to create it that the artists use to really touch people and awaken their own 
um, whatever their own inner process is, whatever their soul needs from that music. And so the variety of music is a reflection of what you need and the energy of your desire to express yourself. And that's what the point is of being a person, is to express yourself. You need to have a human form, a body, and a mind to articulate that, to bring that out into manifested form. And the energy and the soul connection that music brings for you and allows you that opportunity, affords you the opportunity that it gives you is is something that you can't do without. You, you need to have that. And it moves you forward. He says it continues to evolve you, to grow you, to, to expand you and move you forward. Wow, that's, wow. Okay, my goodness, that is a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, David. I really do appreciate your insights. I'm sure the viewers do as well. Remember, this is Above Life Channel, and you've been watching a channeling session with David Bowie in the afterlife. And we spoke about a lot of different um, um, things. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm so, um, I'm in this energy. It feels deep, but, but really uh, profound. It seems, feels profound. So what I'd love for you to do is to participate a little bit here on this particular video. In the comments, if you have a favorite song, whether it's a Bowie song or a Freddie Mercury song or a Prince song or whatever, if you have like a favorite song that just fe you feel such a connection to, such a strong connection to, will you write the title and the artist that sings it, the version that you like, if it has multiple versions, just write the title of the song and the artist that sings it um, in the, in the uh, comments below. Um, please don't put links in there because uh, YouTube is set up to, cap to catch that. It thinks you're doing spam on my channel. So just write the title and the artist. That would be really great. It's a great way to get to know people. And I'm curious about the awesome playlist that we could create here with this video inspired by the spirituality connection to music that David brought in. That is just incredible. All right. So this is Bridget at Above Life Channel. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you know someone that would really benefit from it, go ahead and share it. Remember to check out the playlist of David Bowie and watch for additional afterlife conversations that I will have with him about interesting topics as well, because there is more to come for sure with David Bowie in the afterlife. Remember, part of the purpose of sharing this content and having this experience is because this is your life and the goal is to help encourage you to connect, to feel the energy and to know that as a spirit, you deserve to be inspired. You deserve to be filled up with hope because this is your life. It's your life. So live it. Just live it. Thank you so much for watching.